just the title, um, I, a couple of years ago, I suppose I had finished playing. Um, I had three kids under three. I got a bit bored, so I, I said I'd take on a, a master's. I did a master's in performance coaching that I just kind of recently, recently finished. And before I started doing it, I probably had a good idea that I, that I thought I knew pretty much all that was to be known about playing football or coaching football until I started and realized very quickly that what I knew was a fairly small drop in the ocean and uh, I would have gone in with, with different kind of notions. Now, like if you come to a conference, you come in to hear anybody speak and you see something like creating an autonomy supportive environment, straight away you're thinking, this is a load of cobblers, I should have gone for a cup of tea. Uh, because for some coaches, it seems like it's a big, massive concept. And, um, and I'm very quickly, I'll just touch on some of the kind of research. This isn't my opinion. This is, this is stuff I would have looked at in the last number of years and uh, stuff that I, I think is, is, uh, is pretty powerful stuff and, and particularly something that will be helpful to us as we try and tackle the problem that we have in terms of uh, youth dropout and, and particularly you know, getting to that stage in the game. So, um, and I'll, I'll fly through this stuff. Self-determination theory is something that underpins most of the issues that we have with motivation with anything. Uh, and it's made up of three, your, your three main things, autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Uh, and autonomy is one that I, I really want to focus on. Uh, competence is your ability to do a skill or to, to perform in a game. Autonomy is, your, is that, that feeling that your actions are self-determined, that, that you're, you're deciding your own fate as it was. Um, and, it, and it runs across, it's a theoretical framework basically that, that underpins everything that we know about motivation, why people do stuff. And your, your spectrum goes from a motivation where you're not really motivated to do anything. Extrinsic motivation, which is your, 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 your easy definition, is that you're doing it for an external reason. You're doing it because your dad played football, your mom played hurling, uh, you're doing it to get coke and potatoes after training, you're doing it for some other reason. And then we get to intrinsic motivation, which you've probably heard about before, is, is, is as the research tells us, is the most powerful form of motivation that you can feel. So whether that's going for a walk on a Sunday morning, whether it's reading a book, whether it's going for a cycle, uh, it's doing something because you really want to do it yourself, not because of any other reason, not because of any, but anything anybody else is telling you to do. Um, and and it's, it's defined as that really, okay? So it's the, it's the choice, it's the, a participant who really you know, feels like they want to do something out of the pure enjoyment uh, and the joy that they get out of doing that. So when we're talking about from a football or GA context, uh, Harley, we, we're looking for that. All, we want all our players, our kids, our youths, our adults, to be intrinsically motivated to play Gaelic football or hurling. Because it's the most powerful form of motivation, the most powerful thing that they are going to want to play the game and stay playing the game. So the, the, I suppose the easy aspect of it is intrinsic motivation is about you know, people playing for that fun and enjoyment. And here, here's probably the important part of it. It's, it's, it's about playing for the fun and enjoyment, and research tells us, and you can, you can look it up. I put down one reference. You can, you can Google it, Google Scholars. You'll find it everywhere you want to go. One of the most important determinants in people's persistence in playing sports is that, they, is that they're basically, they're intrinsically motivated, and, and we want to marry that with a little bit of autonomy. So if you have intrinsic motivation, that means you're playing for the fun and enjoyment of the game, and if you find the game fun and enjoyable, you're going to stay playing the game, and you're going to get better at playing, and you're going to perform better. So the, the big link is intrinsic motivation, we stay playing the game. That's, that's the key thing. So as coaches, what, what I find most relevant is how can we get our players to be intrinsically motivated? If intrinsic motivation is so powerful that it keeps people playing the game for longer because they enjoy it and it's fun, then we need to learn as coaches how the hell can we, how, how the hell can we make them feel like this? How can we set up training and games and, and everything to work on their intrinsic motivation? So you thought it was easy. You thought it was about I'll set up a game, I'll have a drill, I'll do my warm up, I'll get a nice fancy drill, it's really complicated and it looks hard, but now, now we have to try and work on their motivation as well. Uh, and, the, and the good thing about this is, you know, it's, it's, it's about how, how you can do that and how you can set up in a way, if you're dealing with 16 year olds or 18 year olds or 25 year olds, and obviously there's other pressures outside that, but, but this is something that we're going to have to look at and is a big, it's, it's going to make a difference, I think, if, you, if you, can, you can get this in a stable diet. Social factors are the big thing. You know, anything you look at, that influences motivation or is about social factors. Like coaching was always about the, the games and the drills. And now there's a realization in any of the science or the coaching science you look at that coaching is actually about a social interaction between people. It's about the people, not the games, not the drills, not the, the win percentage or how many games you win or lose. It's about people. So once we, we, once we can boil it back to actually realizing that coaching is now about a social interaction instead of winning or losing, now, now we start to get down to, okay, now, now this is the way that we can work on people's intrinsic motivation and work on, work on how we get them motivated to keep playing the game. 
So the biggest determinant of the social factors for any players is the coach's behaviours. So how, how you as a coach relate with your players is the, is the biggest determinant in, in, in how they're going to you know, perceive the, the autonomy or the intrinsic motivations they're going to get from you. Um, now, like players' perception of the coach's behaviour are the crucial type of motivation. So you as the coach are the one that really determines how, they're, how motivated they are going to be playing the game. And that's, and that's, I know that that's, might sound like a, a lofty kind of an ambition, but it, that is where we're at. Autonomy support, then you have your, at the start, we had our autonomy, we had our competence, we had our relatives. Competence is fine. You can be really, really good at hurling, you can be really good at football, but you're not going to be, well, you're not going to be overly intrinsically motivated unless we have a bit of autonomy. And, and again, autonomy is, when a coach is being autonomy supportive, it means taking that player's perspective on board, acknowledging their feelings, providing information, opportunities for choice, and minimizing pressures and demands. Now that, again, that, that might sound like something that we're, that's a lot, but there's a lot of research that says these are, ways, these are the ways that we can do that as coach. And again, remember, this is about developing their autonomy because it's hugely related to their intrinsic motivation. The more, the more intrinsically motivated they are, the longer they're going to stay playing the game. I know I'm, 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 I'm repeating myself, I'm reiterating the point because I just think it's a really powerful thing that if we know that intrinsic motivation is the key to keeping them playing longer, and by serving their autonomy and by helping that, we can, we can marry two things. We can keep them, keep them playing the game as long as they want because we're serving their autonomy by, by the stuff we're doing in training. And some of the ways, like the, the seven elements are your choice, your rationale, your feelings, independence, feedback, control, and ego. And, and that's great, but how, how can we as coaches, if we're over an under 16 team, how can we really you know, work on that? If, if we do, the stuff that the players are getting from it, you're increasing their level of, of intrinsic motivation, there's a greater investment of effort from the players, higher levels of concentration, improved persistence, whether that's a task or for the sport, increased performance levels, and a big one is reduced dropout and, and, uh, and burnout. And I, I've stuck a little reference under all of those, and, and I'd encourage everybody to go and have a look at one of them, or Google one of them, because, because this is, it's, it's only growing, this kind of stuff. I don't think, you know, GA coaches, like I said, in the last 10 years, 20 years, it was about drills and games, drills and games. And now, now there's a starting to become a bit of a realization that this is more than drills and games. It's about people, and it's about how we interact with people and get them to follow us. Yes, drills and games are important, maybe drills less so, but it's, it's about how, how we can get these kids to buy into our message. Um, and for coaches, how, how, how is that kind of, you know, how, how can we, we take that information, how can we apply it to, to the kids that we're dealing with or to the adults we're dealing with? Um, and it's, it's about including the people, like we spoke about choice, it's about including the, the players in the whole process. Whether that's, you know, whether that's you're having a meeting about, you know, when you're training, how you're training, what kind of stuff you're doing, what kind of games you're playing. Um, you know, can we, can we train on this night or can we train on that night? Will we look at our conditioning stuff? Will we look at our, you know, condition games? Why are we doing it? But the, the idea is that you're involving the players in the whole process. Not that it's you, you're not the guy that's just, or, or, the, or the girl just demanding what you're doing or laying out what you're doing, you're involving them straight away. Um, and choice is a huge one. Like if, you, if somebody gives you a choice, you're offering them choices. So, so like I, I, I know one coach who, who on a, on, before training has a big whiteboard inside in the dressing room, writes up two different warm-ups every day. Uh, the, the, the kids come out, they have to place a tick next to whichever warm-up they prefer. Coach goes in two minutes before the start of the session, whichever warm-up has more, has more ticks, they run that thing, they run that warm-up. And, and it's a very small little thing, but straight away it's, it's, it's teaching the kids, we've got a choice here, the choice we made, the coach picked it, our opinion is valued, straight away we're talking about motivation levels are going up. It, it sounds like it doesn't, but, but trust me, the research is there to back it up. Everything like that plays a massive part in increasing that intrinsic motivation because you're giving them more autonomy, more control over themselves of their own, of their own destiny, I suppose, in terms of their training and stuff. Uh, explaining your rationale sounds like a very simple thing, but how many coaches go away and say, we're going to do speed endurance tonight, lads, and we're going to do you know, six sets of 100 meters with a 30-second recovery, go. And, and everybody gets on the line, they do it. But how many coaches actually say, this is why we're doing it? This is, this is what we're looking at here, lads. We're trying to get you to operate in your, in your lactate threshold. We're trying to you know, increase your anaerobic capacity. This is what we're doing. Because like, that I mean we have to go out and actually find that information so we can give it to the kids. But rationale is a big thing that you're actually explaining properly what you're doing. It makes a big difference. Um, challenge them, obviously, yeah, to real life. Like, the big thing I have there about challenging to talk to players about real life stuff or stuff outside the white lines. Like, we're so busy in, in coaching, and, and I know full well, I'm, I'm, I'm involved with my own senior team trying to manage those guys. We have about 36 players every night, and you're doing well if you can actually just, you know, get through the session. But, like, one of the challenges I even set for myself is, can, can I get to at least every, every player every night? 
and ask him, ask him something, even if it's only like 10 seconds, just stuff outside the white lines. Something at home, something at work, something with his girlfriend, something with his boyfriend, something, something different outside of what's going on inside in the, in, in the training session. You're, you're, you're valuing them, you're valuing their opinion, know what's going on. Um, set up a leadership group. Uh, like a leadership group, I think, is a great idea for any team. Uh, you're picking, you're pick, and this can be under 14s, 16s, 18s, 20s, whatever it is. You're given, you're given maybe three or four guys. It doesn't have to be your captain. It doesn't have to be your best players. You're giving them a sense of, of, of control or autonomy that they're actually the ones that maybe handle disciplinary stuff. That they're the ones that, you know, set what's going on in training or set what's going on, you know, for the game or how we'd like to play or you report back to the players. But you're giving as much control and as much autonomy to the players as possible. Or, or at least the perception of that. Um, last one, and a very quick little... Little anecdote, and I don't think like back in back in uh, in 2009 with Kerry, uh, we were beaten by by Cork in a in a Munster semi-final or final. Uh, we were going through the qualifiers. We should have been beaten by Longford above in Longford. We should have been beaten by Sligo below in Tralee. Jim Murphy made a penalty save with about 30 seconds to go to win by a point or two. Uh, we were playing Antrim the following week. Uh, we were told no drink. A few boys didn't really listen with that for right could jolly up. Um, word got back to the boss. Following night in training, murder, war. Jack O'Connor was the manager at the time. I don't think he knew what autonomy was. I don't think he knew what any of this was. But he said, you know what you do now? All 30 of you, go up to that room. You, one of you there, look, you, you can run the meeting. Come back down to us in an hour and let us know what your recommendation is to what to do with the three players. About an hour later, maybe an hour and a half later, after we could pull a few fellas off other guys, eventually we went down and the recommendation came from the whole group that the, those players weren't to start the next game against Antrim. Uh, and, and, and again, I don't think Jack O'Connor had studied autonomy or, or knew that this was empowering players, but it, it, became, it became something that was led by the players for the players and, and the whole thing obviously turned around and, and it's a small, it's a, no, and that's, that's obviously, we're talking about inter-county stuff, but that's an example of, of by giving players control and by giving players a sense of ownership of the, of the group and of the whole thing, you're affecting their motivation for the better, you're increasing their intrinsic motivation and for our lower levels of what we're talking about, hopefully that should make a big difference in terms of keeping kids playing the game for that little bit longer. Thanks very much.